Hiya. So now we're going to talk about what an event means a little more mathematically. Like, what does this um, encapsulate for us? Uh, so an event for us is going to just be, if you think about it, um, everything was just some subset of all of our possible outcomes. So we take all of our possible outcomes and we take some subset of it, and that's going to be our event. Uh, so the, for example, the dice rolls a six. So if we have this example, the dice rolls a six. This is just represented by the set six, right? Um, well, the dice rolling an even number, what's this represented by? Uh, this is, I guess I should do different colors. Here, we'll do green for this one. And then this next example we'll do in yellow. The dice rolls an even number. Well, this is represented by the set two, four, six. It can either be two, four, or six. Uh, how about the dice rolls a number less than... I don't want to do that. We'll do this. Uh, how about the dice rolls a number less than three? Well, let's see. So this should be one is less than three. Two is less than three. Uh, and that's it, right? Three is equal to three. Four, five, six are all greater than three. So we chuck them out uh, and we're left with just one and two. Uh, and that gives us the thing. So that basically allows us to talk about um, events as some mathematical object. And the thing is, like, notice how a lot of probability we're talking about, we, we're using words, like this happens, that happens, this happens, we're using our language. And actually language helps us create subsets a lot of the time. So we're gonna go through three different words that kind of are little marker points for when you should be thinking, oh, I need to be doing a certain thing when, I, when it comes to sets. So the first term is the word or. So as an example, I'm going to take uh, the turn, the phrase, the dice rolls a six or a two. So if the dice roll is rolling a six or a two, basically either of these two things can happen, right? I can either have a six or a two or a six. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, and so it's represented by two different events, right? The dice rolling a six and the dice rolling a two. And in this case, we're combining them together because either of them work. And since either of them work, we're going to combine them um, and say we can have either of them. And this is done by the union. So six union two gives us two six. So here, if you're not used to set theory notation, or if you haven't done something like this, please let me know, please talk with me ASAP because um, you're gonna have a lot more difficult time in the rest of the class because it's super dependent on set theory. Um, so yeah, so for all intents purposes, a or B translates to um, A union B. Uh, okay, so next up, how about the word and? Um, well, when we think about and, we want this thing and this thing to happen simultaneously, to happen at the same time, right? So let's test it out with an event from above, from the previous one with a six or a two, and we're just gonna replace the or with an and. So what we end up having is the example, the dice rolls a six and a two. Now think about this. If I take a dice, a die, sorry, and I roll it, what's the chances that it's going to have a six and a two on top? Well, it's going to be impossible, right? Like there's no way I can roll a six and a two when I just roll a die one time. Like that's not, it's not happening. And so in this case, because the two, uh, the two objects are distinct from one another, they're going to be impossible. Um, so what we do, so maybe a better example is if I'm looking at my raffle example um, and I'm looking at, okay, what are the chances that it's going to be a non-binary individual with purple hair, right? Um, and so what you want to do is you want to take the subset of the non-binary individuals, you want to take the subset of the purple hair people, you want to um, take the intersection, you want to see who lives in both and then that'll give you the set uh, that you want to work with. So in particular, we're going to look at, um, intersection. So here, um, I already have for this example, now that I speak it, I should have done the other example, but anyway, it's verbal. So we're done. Um, so in this case we have intersection and if you'll notice for the dice rolling example, we get that the intersection is empty. So when we get an empty intersection, what we're basically saying is that this event is impossible. 
So there are such things as impossible events. It's when the subset is empty. That's it. If the opposite of that, something that is certain, something that is guaranteed, well, this is just when we take all the outcomes, right? If we take all the outcomes, it's going to happen. Something's going to happen within that outcome. And so it's a certain event. It's a guaranteed event. Um, okay, so that's done. One more terminology, and that's the word not. Um, oh, wait, no, before that, before I get there. Um, note that the book uses AB to mean A intersect B. Again, this is old notation. So whenever you see A times B in the book, just remember that they're talking about intersection here. Uh, so something to note. Uh, we don't do that anymore in mathematics. Well, maybe some people do, but um, I definitely won't because um, I think that's definitely confusing. Um, anyway, the word not. That's the next one. So basically when we're talking about something not happening, well, what it means is we're asking if everything else happens, right? So if we're thinking of everything else happening, um, we want to kind of remove this set um, that we're saying is not happening. So let's look at um, the example. The dice doesn't roll a four. Uh, and like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to just remove it from our set. So we take omega and we remove four. And that'll give us one, two, three, five, six. Uh, so another way to write this a lot of times, and we'll use this a lot actually, um, is omega complement. So this is just, uh, sorry, this is the wrong, I did this wrong. Um, for, that's not the word for, for, there we go, complement. This is just omega without the number four. So we will use this terminology um, a lot uh, for things. So let's look at... Um, an example of these in action. So example 1.2. Bam. Uh, okay, so what do, what do we have? Uh, we're going to think of the stereotypical example. We're going to think about flipping a coin. So let's flip a coin. Um, and you can kind of notice we're going to have two options, right? We either have heads or tails. That's it. So our outcome, our sample space is either heads or tails. So the question now becomes, what subset of omega is going to be representative for the following four examples? So the outcome is heads. Well, this is kind of easy. We just take heads as our subset. That's it. Uh, the outcome is heads or tails. So here we're going to have to think of union, right? So we should take the union of heads or tails. And so here, if you think about it, we have H anti, which is just omega. So this is a certain event. So this is guaranteed to happen. We will either get heads or tails when we flip. That's it. There's no other options. Um, how about the heads? Uh, how about heads and tails? So again, language helps us. We just take heads and tails. Here, this is going to be the empty state. There's nothing in common between the two. So this is impossible. So this is an impossible event. And last but not least, let's look at when something is not heads. So here we have the term not head, right? So I take head and I take the complement. So this is equal to omega without head. So that just leaves us with just tails. And that gives us the outcome when head is not tails. If it's not, if it's, sorry, head is, ah, if our outcome is not heads. Uh, so if it's not heads, it has to be tails, right? That's the other option. And we see that from uh, this terminology. Uh, so here I have a list of a bunch of different ways to kind of translate human language to set language. Uh, most of these we kind of went over. Sample space, this is just some collection of outcomes. Uh, event that some outcome in A occurs is just some subset of A. Not A, remember, is just the complement. A and B is intersection. A or B, this is union. Uh, impossible event is the empty set and whole space, a certain event is the whole sample space. Uh, the only three we didn't go over are these three. Um, so if we have A but not B, what we're basically saying is we want 
all the elements of A and we want to remove everything from B. We don't want the things in B. Um, and this is just called the difference in set language. Um, sometimes you'll see books uh, use A minus B, uh, depending on if you're going to use another book. Sometimes you'll see A minus B for this. Um, well, I use the backslash all the time, but yeah. Um, then we have either A or B, but not both. This is called the symmetric difference. Uh, and then if A, then B, this is just inclusion. So if it's an A and it must be in B, well, A must be a subset of B. Uh, so that's it for this little talk. Um, we'll talk about probability in the next uh, video. Thanks.